Hey, what's up? Happy 13th. Today we talk about Newsome and we talk about psychedelics. All right, so first up, Gavin Newsom, fresh out of not being recalled, can get back to governing, and he signed a couple bills and did not sign a couple bills. The first one that he signed, which, you know what, um, this one has more repercussions than it sounds like at first, which is that you can now have uh, smokable hemp in California. It is now legal to sell in the marketplace smokable hemp, CBD oils in foods and drinks and uh, weight stuff. That that is one thing that you know when you when first read at least for me I thought I thought we had that. I thought that I thought you could just get CBD anywhere, and it was pretty easy. But the difference is, it, they're specifically CBD infused things. There, it's a CBD market. This makes it able to get CBD and other hemp products in, you know, a Whole Foods or or wherever. You can you can just get it in random products that you find in a grocery store. Um, it basically opens up the CBD market a whole lot more than it was before, and that all requires a new tax scheme. So that has. Uh, they they say sometime in 2022 that'll come out. So there's going to be a bit of time before we see this on the market. However, they said that they're able to start growing more CBD in, in farms and give it to other states. So I have a new apartment and I really like it here. Uh, the one thing is that there is a dog upstairs that barks a lot. So I'm sorry if you hear that. Next story, we move to psychedelics. One place that I think uh, I'm very excited for because of the possibility of what's going to come in the next 10 years with this whole avenue. Basically, a study came out that uh, earlier this year that showed a link between people not being as obese who have tried psychedelics in the past. And in a similar kind of fashion, a new study is showing a link between those who have tried psychedelics and a lower risk of heart disease or diabetes. They basically used the same survey, which was the uh, National Survey on drug use and health that had 375,000 Americans participate in it. So a pretty good sample size there. And they found any links between those who had used psychedelics and those who had any heart disease. And uh, the people who had said they, they had tried psychedelics, 2.3% of them said they have some sort of heart disease. Those who had not tried psychedelics, 4.5% of them said they had some sort of heart disease. So it's almost double the amount. It is still a small number. Um, the percentage is, you know, still really small according like four percent it's not the accurate amount that's in america with heart disease but it's clearly less and because of this large sample size the plus or minus percentages are rather small there's a lot to be said about this data one of the main things is that it's hard to create a very uh strict link between psychedelic use and a lack of heart disease because there are so many lifestyle choices that someone who would try psychedelic um, has that it's different from those who wouldn't um, right now it's illegal in a lot of places so you're already kind of there's a risk that's inherent in that uh, there are risk takers and people who are more willing to try new things already in and of itself are people who would break bad habits so it's it's hard to put a lot into that however there is data there is more and more data coming out that show that the more psychedelics you do or having tried psychedelics you have more neural plasticity which basically makes it easier for you to change ways of thinking that have that you've been ingrained in. So while it's impossible to really kind of take full linkage in this, it's um, it's worth noting that there is something there. Also, psychedelics are having kind of a bit of a renaissance for a multitude of reasons. One reason is just uh, the stigma around it kind of finally shedding away, and the other is that we really freaking need some kind of new alternative way of dealing with stress in our lives. Um, for instance, an article at Yahoo talks about how because of COVID-19, um, first responders and healthcare providers are really dealing with the most amount of stress and PTSD that they have in their lives. And there have been psychedelic assisted programs popping up specifically targeting health healthcare providers and first responders because of this. For instance, there's one in Vancouver Island that is ketamine assisted uh, that is specifically for healthcare providers. And I actually saw one pop up on Instagram a couple days ago, a ketamine assisted uh, program. I'm sure there are a lot of those. I should have 
screen captured it, but I didn't. One, uh, one person in that article particularly said that her weekly therapy is not enough to deal with this stress. So there are a lot of people quitting healthcare work because of just the amount that they're seeing each day. And I can't even imagine, I honestly can't imagine after, after dealing with it for almost two years now. Uh, so this is a perfect time to try something like psychedelic treatment and see if it works for you. I just realized I didn't talk about one other thing with Gavin Newsom. So let's go back to Gavin Newsom really quick. So he passed that CBD law. He did not pass one other thing. He vetoed a bill that would allow um, marijuana billboards on highways. And there's been kind of this back and forth with billboards on highways and uh, a lot of it dealing with interstate highways. Uh, a control board in the state said that it's okay to have advertisements on highways, just not interstate highways. And as long as the highways stay in the border of California. Uh, and that was what the bill was, was saying like any any highways that stay in, in the state of California, you can have a billboard on. Gavin Newsom said, no, like, we're, not, we're not having any uh, billboards on highways, which uh, he cites the reason being that it would advertise to kids. And again, that brings my mind to the same argument that a million people have made, which is this double standard between cannabis advertisement and alcohol advertisement. The fact that you can have a Bud Light commercial on national television and you cannot have a marijuana billboard on a highway is absurd to me. But that is what they cite and that will continue to be what they cite until uh, that stigma gets pushed away and we are allowed advertisements at least in the same level as other um, drugs or vices or what have you. Not to say that marijuana is a vice. Okay, and that's all I have today. Thankfully, the dog stopped barking, and we'll be back on Friday with more stories. See you then.